إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed, our praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then no one can guide. I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah with a fear that is due to him and do not die except as a Muslim. O mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single person. And from that person he created his mates. And from the two of them he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off family ties. Indeed, Allah is an all watcher over you. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, and say that which is correct and upright. If you do this, Allah will rectify for you your deeds, and He will forgive you of your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has attained a great achievement. As for that which follows, indeed, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah, the Quran. And the best and the finest of guidance is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an innovation in the religion. And every innovation is misguidance, and every misguidance is in the hellfire. One of the many distinguishing qualities and characteristics that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was singled out with over other prophets and messengers is that he was given Jawamir al Kirim, which is concise, comprehensive speech. And you find with a lot of people, sometimes they can talk for 30 minutes or an hour or longer. And when you walk away, it's as though you didn't get any type of benefit. Or it's as though they couldn't convey or get their point across. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would speak, he could say a very few words. However, those few words, they would contain vast comprehensive means. An example of this, is that which is found in the hadith as Mutafakun Ali. It's collected by Bukhari and Muslim. From the hadith, Hadith Abi Hurairah رضي الله عنه. He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said, تَعَوَّذُوا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ جَهْدِ الْبَلَى وَدَرَكِ الشَّقَى وَسُوِ الْقَضَى وَشَمَاتَةِ الْأَعْدَى The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Seek refuge with Allah from severe calamity, misery, and evil destiny, and the gloating of the enemy. And this is in fact a supplication that the Prophet used to say himself, and he would encourage the Sahaba to say. So if you don't know this supplication, then we should learn. It's very short. Five, ten minutes and you will know, will know this supplication. 
It contains very many benefits, and likewise, it's a protection from the four things that are mentioned in this hadith. And the first thing that the Prophet وسلم, has directed us to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from is jahdul bala, severe calamity, severe hardship that a person cannot bear or tolerate. And this is applicable to the severe calamities that a person experiences in his body. Whether it's a sickness or an ailment or even severe hunger and thirst. And likewise, this is applicable to trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations that are so severe and so great that a person would prefer to die than to live. And from amongst the people are those who when they're going through severe calamities and severe hardships, instead of them being patient and seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they lose all hope. They despair the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them, they even go backwards as it relates to their religion. Some of them will stop praying. Some of them will stop fasting the month of Ramadan. Some of them will stop wearing the proper hijab and other than this. And some of them, they get to the point and they get to the extent where they apostate and they leave the religion in its totality. Allah Jalla wa Ala said in his noble book, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ يَعَنِي عَلَىٰ شَكْ And from amongst the people are those who worship Allah on the edge. Meaning they worship Allah in a state of doubt. Iman is not true in their hearts. Yes, they say that they are believers, but Iman is not really in their hearts. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَأَنَّ بِهِ And if something happens to him, something good happens to him, then he's content and he's reassured. وَإِنْ أَصَابَ وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ فِتْنَةٌ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِ And if something bad happens to him, if a trial and tribulation befalls him, then he turns on his face, meaning he leaves the religion. خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْأَخِرَةِ He loses this world as well as the next. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Indeed, that is a clear loss. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, وَدَرَكِ الشَّقَى and from being overcome with severe misery. And this is applicable to everything that causes a person to become miserable and wretched. And it brings about his destruction in this world and the after. And the misery that a person experiences in this world, no matter how bad it may be, it doesn't matter how severe it may be, then this is temporary. It's not going to last forever. Whereas the misery that a person experiences in the after, especially if this person was a disbeliever, then it's non-stop. If a person lived his life upon his shirk, and he died upon his shirk, then he's going to live in a perpetual state of misery and suffering. And he's never going to experience happiness after this. Allah Jalla wa Ala said, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارُ لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَهِيقٌ And from, and as for those who are rich, as for those who are miserable, they will be in the hellfire. And they will inhale and exhale violently. Imagine a person in this dunya, if you saw him panting, gasping for air. Sometimes you see some people, they have severe asthma. It's as though they can't even breathe. And the year after, the people who are miserable and they're wretched, they're going to be in the hellfire and they're going to be in a state where they are inhaling and exhaling in a violent state. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَانَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكُ And they will remain in the hellfire as long as the heavens and the earth endure. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكُ Except for what your Lord wills. And this is with regard to the Muslims who enter into the hellfire and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually will take them out. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيدُ Indeed, your Lord does whatever He wants. أقول ما تسمعون والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah, the Lord of everything that exists والعاقبة للمتقين The good end is for those who possess piety ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين And there is no transgression except against those who are oppressed وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ I bear witness that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He's alone and he has no partners. And he aids and he supports those who are righteous. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم And I bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم is his slave and his messenger. أما بعد The third thing that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has directed us to seek refuge with Allah سبحانه وتعالى from in the supplication is سوء القضاء An evil judgment or an evil destiny As some of the scholars have said that this refers to making bad judgments and bad decisions. You have some people, when it comes to making choices, they make terrible choices. And because of this, it affects them in a negative way. It can affect them and it might affect others. They might even oppress others because of the bad choices that they make. And likewise, Su al Qadha and evil destiny is with regard to the things that have been preordained for a person. Those things that cause a person sadness and grief, whether it's connected to himself, his family, his wealth, his religion, and other than this. And if a person happens to go through hardships, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something for him, and it causes him sadness and grief, then he should not subject himself to another calamity by committing sins. Some Muslims, their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like that of a child with his parents. If his parent gives him a toy or some candy, then the child will obey and he will comply. But if his parent doesn't give him that toy or that candy, then the child will be acting obnoxious and he will be disobedient. Some of us, whether we realize it or not, this is how we behave with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us what we want, then we're obedient. We remain steadfast upon our religion. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give us what we want and things don't go our way, then we become defiant and disobedient. And when a person's situation is like this, that he is constantly being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when things don't go his way, then this is an indication that he is not truly a believer. A true believer when he's in good times and things are being easily facilitated for him, it's imperative that he is appreciative and that he's thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when things don't go his way, or when things are going very difficult for him, then it's imperative that he's patient, that he seeks his reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, عَجَبَنِي أَمْرِ mu'min." Amazing is the affair of the believer. Astounding is the affair of the believer. All of his affair is good. And he said this is only for the believer. If something good happens to him, if something good befalls him, then he's thankful and that's better for him. And if something bad happens to him, if something doesn't go his way, then he's patient and that's better for him. The Prophet وسلم, said, And from the gloating of the enemy, meaning I seek refuge with you, O Allah, from my enemies becoming happy and overjoyed with my calamity and my hardship. And this is applicable to the enemies of Islam. Those who conspire day and night, with the goal of tarnishing the true image of Islam. The goal is to make Islam look like some type of barbaric religion so that others do not embrace it. And when calamities and hardships befall the Muslims, they become happy and overjoyed. When they hear about Muslims being killed in Palestine, or being killed in Sudan, or Yemen, or Syria, or Syria, and other parts of the world, then they openly express their, happy, their happiness and they become overjoyed. And the scholars have also said that one's enemy becoming happy at his, at his calamity is also applicable to affairs of this dunya. A person's business partner or someone that he knows, that a person becomes happy when his business venture doesn't go right or when something in his worldly affairs doesn't go as he planned and his enemy becomes happy because of this. And when a person's enemy becomes happy and he becomes overjoyed at a person's calamity, then this is going to lead to rancor and animosity. 
is going to lead to grudges. It might even lead to violence and bloodshed. And this is why it's legislated for us to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our enemies becoming happy and overjoyed with our calamities. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min jahdi al-bala wa darak al-shaqa wa suwa al-qadha wa shamatat al-a'da Allahumma a'izza al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhilla al-shirk wa al-mushrikin wa adhamir a'da'aka a'da'a al-deen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.